I'd like to pay homage to my favorite channel, Cody's Lab, a channel which sadly is in danger of disappearing from the internet forever, because some internet trolls have decided to start falsely flagging his videos as inappropriate. Now, Cody's Lab is a mostly educational and entirely entertaining science channel. There's very little on there to get offended about. But anyway, there are two strikes against the channel already. Cody is currently forbidden from uploading any new content. And if one more strike comes in, the channel's gone. So, some of us out in internet land have made backup copies. I'm one of them. So at least the content can't disappear completely but it can end up becoming very hard to find. So if any of you know of ways to help keep Cody's channel in existence, please, by all means, do what you can. And show your support to Cody however you can. Because it was Cody who actually inspired me to go on this crazy element collecting adventure And it would be a real tragedy to see his channel disappear. That said, let's get on with the element collecting. Because it was Cody who inspired me to make this particular video, in spite of obstacles. The weather being one of them, because this is an experiment that really, really should have been done outdoors. But I had to do it indoors because it's been raining all weekend. It was something Cody posted up on the Facebook page about his channel. He mentioned that he'd still not managed to acquire bromine for his collection. I was naturally quite surprised. I'm like, dude, you bit into sodium, you drank cyanide, why would you not have acquired bromine? He explained that he had a bad experience with chlorine in his youth, and has been hesitant ever since to mess with the halogens and told me to be careful. So when someone who bites into sodium metal and drinks cyanide and lives to upload the video about it and pours liquid oxygen on a grease fire just for the explosion and actually drank liquid nitrogen <laughs> he's done some pretty crazy things. So when someone who does those kind of things on YouTube tells me to be careful. Trust me. I know darn well to be careful. So this episode's about chlorine, element number 17. A yellowish-green poisonous gas. In its pure elemental form, it's toxic to every known form of life on planet Earth. That's why we use it as a disinfectant. We put it in swimming pools, we put it in tap water, and it kills germs, and it kills them well. On the other hand, the flip side, the chloride ion, which is a chlorine atom plus an extra electron, is absolutely essential to every form of life on Earth. There is no earthly life form that can live without chloride in its system. That includes us. So it's basically a matter of life and death wrapped up in one element. Now in the vein of being careful, as Cody warned me to do, I set up the experiment so that at any given moment there would only be enough chlorine in the apparatus to smell bad. Not enough to actually hurt me or anybody around me. So I made sure, worst case scenario, oh, it smells like bleach in here. That said, let's get on to the experiment. I have the final trap here. 
full of a solution of sodium bicarbonate to neutralize any chlorine that gets out. I have two check valves, a little squeeze bulb, and a balloon to create a reduced pressure to pull gas through the system. And I've decided to abandon the manganese dioxide method in favor of electrolysis of a salt solution simply because that gives me a whole lot more control of what's going on. So, I'm going to use this glass test tube here to collect the initial gas from the electrolysis. And this is the carbon anode that I previously made. I'm going to put that up inside the test tube. And I have this long plastic, very thin plastic tube here, uh, made from a glow stick that I heated and stretched. Okay, got to put the plastic tube in first. All the way up to the top. Then put in the carbon anode. And I want to put that well up in there so no gas escapes into the air. Okay, now the thin plastic tube goes up here into the first liquid trap, then in here to the ampoule to collect the chlorine, into the second trap, then into the final, I've been calling this a trap, it's a scrubber, and that'll convert any chlorine that gets passed here into bleach. So, if I connect positive wire here. Okay. Um, carbon anode, you get up there in the tube. Seriously. No falling. Okay, push that way up higher than it needs to go so it can fall back down to the right spot. There we go. Now, Give that a squeeze, and we'll start pulling the solution. The salt solution will start rising up inside that test tube. And I don't have a good electrical connection yet. There we go. Fizzing has begun. Gas generation has begun. Okay, pulling up the solution in the test tube. And as the gas begins to generate, it'll begin flowing through the system. And it'll start collecting in the test tube over here. A little more than 15 minutes in, and the pale yellow-green of chlorine is just starting to show up inside of the ampoule. Now, I'm deliberately doing this process slowly, methodically, carefully, and the reason I chose electrolysis instead of uh, the manganese dioxide method is if something goes wrong, I can just disconnect the power and the reaction stops completely. And I did that for safety reasons. Well, I really had expected it to be a darker yellow-green than that, but it is visible. So I'm going to get ready to seal off that ampoule and bring this experiment to a close. Yes, I know, I should be doing this outdoors. Problem is, it's been raining and I ran out of daylight. It's one of the constant problems with working night shift. You tend not to be awake during uh, the daylight part of the day, 
especially in winter. So let's get this ready to seal. That's that. Yeah, there's water in it, but if you see, there is the pale yellow of chlorine in there. So it's done. Disconnect the power, let this cool off, and hang it in the table. Really bad news here. I thought I smelled bleach. Focus. There is a hairline crack in the ampoule. Well, it would have been a very nice ampoule of chlorine had it not cracked. And it would be sitting there being all yellow and green instead of being all transparent. But... It gives me a good reason to do an episode sometime in the future, after I can afford to buy another box of test tubes, and I'm going to redo some of my element samples that didn't turn out quite the way I wanted them to. Chlorine, carbon, copper, bismuth. The chlorine, obviously, because my ampoule failed and I don't have enough test tubes to make another one today. My carbon, because it doesn't look so good, there was some contamination on the outside of the carbon rod that I neglected to clean off because I didn't know it was there. So the carbon's actually stuck to the glass and doesn't look as good as it should. The copper, because after I made my video on silver, which is a vastly more expensive metal, a teeny tiny sample of copper looks kind of wimpy. And the bismuth, because I never got the sample out of it that I hoped I would. I've actually experimented with some more of the bismuth that was left over from this experiment, and I have gotten that to coalesce into small bismuth beads. I should be able to melt those together into something at least shiny and metallic, if not a large crystal of actual crystalline bismuth. So hey, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, hit the like button. If you know someone else who might like it, hit the share button. And if you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. And don't be afraid to leave comments. Alright, see you next time.